In your last video, we looked at setting up the squeeze page to forward people through the process and get to start building your list and allow them to get the free form. In this video, we're going to actually now look at how we set up the PayPal button on our website. And the reason why we uploaded this all before was to make it actually easier for us when we're setting up PayPal. Now, what we do before we go into PayPal, you should have your website here. If you right click in your browser and put copy image URL and then just paste that into your browser right click paste that is the place this is where on the internet this is where our image is located so we highlight this right click and copy now we go to PayPal and we log in once logged in you want to look along the tabs for the merchant services and then we want to accept by selling a single item. So we choose sell single item. And then we're going to have a buy now button. We want to give the item a name and an ID. So I'm calling my ETV video course and I've given the night to number ID ETV001. You can do what you like here. Keep it again relevant because if you're getting lots of sales with lots of packages, you want to know what you're selling. Price at $10 in this case, for our example, whatever price you're selling it at. And then you want to come down. Now you can skip through the customizations of the text fields, etc. But you want to customize the appearance of the actual button. And you want to use your own image. So we click this. And it's asking us for the address of where it is. So if we highlight, right click, or at the end of HTTP, we just put right click and paste. You might need to take it out. Just double check. Here we go, it's actually in there twice. So let's take that out. So just make sure it's got the right image and you can always double check by highlighting it, right clicking, copying, open a new browser window, right click and paste. Just to make sure, yep, that's right, I'm happy with that. Close that, we're back to our page. We're use settings saved in your PayPal profile or you can have specifics about postage, it's entirely up to you. You can use your secure merchant account ID if it's relevant, or you can use your primary email address on your account. Step two, track inventory, save button at PayPal, so you can save it. Protect your buttons from fraudulent changes, leave this in. We don't need to track inventory or profit and losses. We can go to step three. Step three is customize the checkout page. Most of these you can leave the default, so do you want to let your customer change order? No. Do you want to allow them to add special instructions? You might want to accept messages. If you do, leave it a yes, or you can check no. Do you want to collect their postal address? Always a good idea to collect it if you can. Then where it says take customers to this URL when they cancel their checkout, take customers to this URL when they finish checkout. Now the finish checkout, where you've actually got your website, on your folders that you've downloaded, if you go into website, there's one called DL and it's .html. If I show it to you in the folder, if we go to the ETV folder, you'll see we've got a dl.html page that we've already uploaded. Now you've got a couple of options here. You can either use that, and all you do then is go to your site. It says yoursite.com forward slash ETV forward slash dl.html. You can highlight all this, right click and copy, Go into PayPal and that will be the finished checkout link that you're going to send them to. Now, if you want to get a bit more protective, if you're worried about people knowing what they might test a DL file, all you do is go into your file, right click on the DL name, rename it, and just give it some weird characters that no one's going to guess. 5872. I can change it to what I like. All I need to do then is right click and copy. That's now my download file. If I go back in now to my website, and now I paste that in where the DL was, and I hit enter, that's now my download file. It's the same thing, but my customers won't necessarily be able to guess it. So I can now copy this, go into PayPal, and paste it. And it's a little bit more secure. It's entirely up to you if you want to change it, but that's how you can do it if you want to. Now, if they cancel, we don't want them going to the thank you page. So if we remove that and just go to the ETV folder, they'll go to the index page. So 
So we'll highlight this, right click and copy. Go back and we just want to take them back to the sales page. We don't want them to go to our download page. And that's it, we don't need to add any variables. We can now just choose create button. We now need to highlight all of this code or we can choose select code. Either way, right click and copy. And that's our form code. And again, in case we lose anything as we go along, I'm gonna open up a notepad and paste. And that's my form code for my button. I now want to go to where I'm editing my website. This will take you back. These are your reseller files. You go into your website folder. Index, I'm gonna open this in Dreamweaver. Again, your favorite HTML editor. And just to show you, this is our sales page here. And when we get down here, this is our image. And if I show you this in code, in the code, our image says there that it's got our image because it's locally on our site. Now we want to delete this now. I'm gonna hit enter a few times. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to, to be able to, for me to be able to see where my button is. Go back to my, go back to my notepad where I highlighted, the, where I saved the form, the PayPal form, copy it, right click, paste. So now I've put my PayPal form into my sales page and the price it's got XX, we've said we wanted to charge $10, so we just changed that. And where it says your name here, we want to change that. And your potential success, you can change that as well. You can edit it what you like to say here. So we've got it to your success, and we can refresh this. And it's now going to put the PayPal button into the page for us rather than our own image that we had in to begin with. Now, something I want to show you, sometimes PayPal, even though we've actually got a center, telling it to center the code anyway, it doesn't center it, we need to recenter it. So the way we do that is we go back into our code, and where it says PLI equals center, we've already got that, but we want to make sure the form centers. So just drop down a line, do a little bracket the same angled bracket I believe it's called here and just type the word center and close that bracket come down to just after where the form is and mine's gonna punch it in for me we just put a little forward slash and center in the angled brackets and then if we file and we save if I now refresh this you'll see it's moved it and centered it and it's also telling us it's ten dollars and it's also got your success and obviously it says my name your name would be in here now we can upload this so now we go back to our reseller files into our website make sure that we're in the ETB folder where we uploaded our sales page index.html if you're always worried about if you ever worried about overwriting files just before you upload the new one just right click choose rename just go to the end of where it says index put an underscore and just type old and hit enter and then when we upload the new one that we've just saved with the PayPal button, just uploading that, we're not going to overwrite. So if we've made anything wrong, we can always download this and re-edit it again. It's entirely up to you. Now we can go to our website. We're at our sales page. So we hit enter. And it pulls back up now. Come down here and we should see a live link PayPal button and the price. And if we click the link, we should get taken to PayPal where it asks us to make a payment. And indeed it has, it's given it the label that we, we actually gave it, and the item number, the price, person would fill out the details, hit login, pay, return to merchant, and because of the way we set it up with that thank you page, if you remember we use this nicely named one here, go take a copy, because PayPal would then forward them to that page, they should then see the thank you for their purchase. And because of the way we've set it up and the way the folder structure works, if someone now clicks these links, it's gonna take them to the video files folder relevant to that, and they're gonna be able to actually watch each video. And then they can also download their resources zip file as well. And again, I've got here, add your bonus links or anything else you'd like to include. So at this point, if you want to have some affiliate links or anything else relevant, you can edit this download page. And the way that you do that, once again, you go to folder. Now remember, because you've changed this on the internet, 
you'll want to change this here, otherwise when you upload it, you've got to do it again. So just quickly go in. You've got the copy there. We already copied it a minute ago to take a look. So go to our folder, rename it, right click, paste, because I renamed it. If you've left it as DL, it doesn't matter. It will stay the same. But again, we can now open this in our editor. In my case, it's Dreamweaver. Scroll down. Where it says here, add bonus links or anything else, you could put some affiliate related products, you could send whatever you like here, you can add this to your delivery page. But that's it, that's how you set it up using PayPal. In our next video, you can watch how you'd set this process up using Pastebree. Thanks for watching.